Sarah here. Welcome back to Never Out of Books. In case you didn't notice, we're almost halfway through August and I haven't even told you what I read in July yet. And now it's like way past that. So I'm going to try to do a good job in telling you what I read. I've got to get my trusty Bujo out. And hopefully I remember why or why I didn't like a book. So we'll see how this goes. Let me just start with the fact that I read three books from the Secret History of the Pink Carnation series by Lauren Willig. I can't really say too, too much because it spoils everything um, from the first book. Needless to say, I adore this series. I adore this author. I love how she just writes such different people. And if you've been watching my videos, I think I say this in every video where I read one of these books. So uh, all of her characters are very different people. They're not cookie cutter. They're not perfect. There's some that you like and some that you don't like, just like, you know, people in real life. You know, there's certain traits that you're just not a fan of. Love it. She writes people so well. Um, so this is the third, I believe. Um, the Deception of the Emerald Ring. This is Letty and Jeffrey's story, and they were never supposed to be a story because he was trying to elope with her sister, and she is trying to prevent scandal from her family and ends up getting compromised by him just because, you know, they were outside of a carriage or something. You know, hey, it's olden times. Rules were different. Anyway, she's forced to marry him. He is, treats her like a complete douche. You know, he's like treating her so terribly for this whole thing. Doesn't believe her. G runs off to Ireland because he's part of this League of the Pink Carnation. There's uh, political things going on. And she is a fun character because she actually is not spy material at all. She is open up front, doesn't lie, can't fake anything. <laughs> but she follows him because she's like, you, you know, you left me behind and I'm completely humiliated here. And she has to attempt to do some of that. Um, and so this does bring in some of the characters from the first three books. It's a whole lot of fun. I personally like Letty very much, just again, my personal opinion and um, this was enjoyable. The modern aspect of the story between Eloise and Colin, I don't remember much in this story, but I don't think they're together yet because their story is very slow over 11 books. So just, anyway, I don't think they're, they're doing so much in modern day, but this one was great. Um, the next one was The Seduction of the Crimson Rose, and this one, features Mary, who is Letty's sister, the one that was supposed to marry Jeffrey, and um, one of the nastiest men in the series that you just never know what side he's playing. He, yeah, Lord Vaughn, and he is Lord Vaughn. It's just the way it is. So this is their story, and these two are a match made in heaven, and these two, unlike the other two who speak, you know, very literally, there's no going around corners, no talking in circles. All these two do is talk in circles. Like, it's it's crazy. Mary is not likable. She's a snobby, snobby girl. You know, I, maybe people like that. It is what it is, but you know, there's someone for everyone. And, and the way he talks about her and the way she talks about him with these qualities that I'm like, this is, I don't like this is just so beautiful because again there's someone for everyone and some people really like this great book i enjoyed it um mary is a good spy on the other hand <laughs> let me just say that with all that talking around in circles and never quite knowing who's doing what yeah that's a good thing then i jumped around in the series because i went on the, her website and they said she said to read this was like kind of an afterthought book because her fans were wanting a love story between for Turnip Fitzhugh, which again, if you read the story, the name says it all. He's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, and so she wrote, you know, his love story. This has no modern day in it. It is strictly his story. Um, 
and she wrote it out of order because people wanted it and she had already plotted. So this takes place around the Christmas time season at a house party and so it is technically the seventh book but she recommends you read it now. So I did um, and I love Turnip. I love him. He's great. Turnip just I think they say it in the book, but he just intends to be happy and that is it. He is going to turn it all, he's going to be happy, he's totally silly character. I just love him. And then Arabella, it, it's interesting because turn up, like there's no titles, there's none of that going on, but he does have money. Arabella, you know, she's like a middle class person, so it was fun to read about people that were not all dukes and earls and all of that. and have a more you know Arabella was just invited because you know she's no competition for the Dowager just Duchess's granddaughter who's Charlotte we get her story I'm currently reading just finished reading her story actually uh, <laughs> so I don't know this was this is charming and delightful I enjoyed it I also read the little short story that follows that um, away in a manger a very turn up wedding night it was like a 14 page little chapter that probably should have just been included in the book and it is exactly what it says it is and it is funny just saying from Goodreads I want to give away and I finally read it it was called fighting Irish by Katie Regnery my pronunciation is not going well today, sorry. Um, this is a romance, it's the first book in a trilogy, and it is all about the Haven triplets. So this is the first story following Rory. He is running right now the family's old summer camp, although it's not a summer camp for kids anymore. He's turned it into kind of like a convention center retreat. And, um, Brittany used to go to the old summer camp and they had had an attraction or whatever, but there were rules that you do not mix, you know, those boys were not allowed to mix with the paying customers. And so nothing ever happened. But she's getting married and she decides she wants to get married there. Um, and amid all of this, things happen. And Brittany's fiance is an absolute jerkwad. So nothing unexpected here. It was cute. You know, and I don't really have much else to say. It was adorable. It wasn't anything fantastic. It was a pretty middle of the road book for me. And I gave it three stars because, you know, Goodreads doesn't have half stars. I also picked up uh, Absolute Trust by Par Piper J. Drake. This I got in a book box. It is a contemporary romance. This follows Brandon and Sophie. Brandon was military. He and his friends own a canine facility for previous military dogs. Um, and so they all bring these dogs that they're training everywhere. And some old enemy comes back and starts targeting Sophie for some strange reason. All she does is bake and bring treats to the dogs, but whatever. Um, but it is a love story. It is their story. I unfortunately did not get along with the writing in this book. I can't really pinpoint what it was that drove me crazy. I ended up doing more of a skim read of this than a enjoy read because I did want to find out, you know, who it was who done it. Um, but this was just not for me, which is a shame because normally I like animals in books and like animal books. And I did like the dog who was an amputee and very cool, but just the writing wasn't good and I didn't like it. So yeah. From the library, I grabbed um, Save the Date by Morgan Matson. This is a new release. Every once in a while I do read a new release, it happens. Um, Morgan Matson is a hit or miss young adult author for me. I, I like some, didn't like some, didn't even try some, but this one was about a wedding and I am trash for wedding stories. So I said, okay, well, this is, this is cool. And I really, really, really did enjoy this book. So Charlie, it's about Charlie, who's a girl, in case you didn't know. Uh, and her older sister is getting married at home 
and she is the youngest of a group of siblings by several years. She is a senior in high school or going to be a senior in high school, I want to say. Now I can't remember. And she, all who she wants in life is for things to be the way they were when all the all her brothers and sisters were home and everyone was happy and it was wonderful and so she sees this as reclaiming the past. <laughs> Needless to say, everything goes wrong and girl gets a dose of reality that nothing stays the same. Um, so there were some really good lessons in this book, I guess you could say. I enjoy that when there is a little bit of a learning as in you know, not everything always goes quite as you want it to do. Uh, <laughs> and not everything is quite the reality you think it is. Um, but there was some seriously unbelievable stuff in here because not many people would leave catastrophes to a 17 year old to fix. So she, it does have like a little bit of a love story-ish in it. Um, the people planning the wedding, there's a boy around her age. I think he's a year or so older and, and in college, but um, he is working with them to make sure this wedding goes off without a hitch, which it doesn't. Uh, <laughs> and uh, they end up riding around together and she ends up trying to help him and stuff. But I don't see that that would necessarily happen. Um, but then again, she was like very determined to make sure this was perfect and yeah, I mean, it was, it was a cute book. I gave it four stars. I really, I really enjoyed it anyway, cause I'm wedding trash. It is what it is. This coming from the person who eloped, just saying. <laughs> then I finally finished the Starbound series. This is the third and final book, Their Fractured Light by Amy Coffin and Kaufman and Megan Spooner. This was very, I believe, hyped on booktube at some point. The series has not always been exactly what I've enjoyed. I will admit that, although this was definitely my favorite book of the trilogy, which is not a popular opinion because most people didn't like this one as much. Um, and, you know, it would be a spoiler to really go into the politics, but there are a lot of politics going on in this, in this uh, book. And all of the previous couples, the other two previous couples, end up going and people that were just mentioned in the other books, you find out who they are. And they are the main characters in this book. So, <laughs> this is about Gideon, who is a hacker, and about Sophia who is a con artist, how it all ends up with with everything and with the whispers and all of that. Liked their love story. I like this was definitely better written, more enmeshed um, as opposed to some of the other books. I liked these two together. I liked the ending and the resolution of like the whole thing. Do I recommend you read this trilogy? I don't think you should go out of your way. If you like to read young adult space opera, then then maybe you'll want to. But overall, I didn't enjoy the series very much. Like it was just a middle of the road series. Was not keen on book two. Book one was okay and this was good. So it like averages out to a three star, which is not bad. But this was my favorite one of the series. They all have beautiful covers, by the way, with the girls with the dresses. This was like the start of the dress on book's face. <laughs> but I do have to say maybe some of that four star did come from the fact that I'm so thrilled that I finished the trilogy and it's one trilogy off of my list of, of series that I really did want to finish, especially since I own it. And now I can donate it. It is lovely. I did a lot of audiobook last month, and the trend is actually continuing this month, but uh, on audio, I actually listened to Eligible by Curtis Sittenfeld. I didn't write down who the narr narrator of it was. I apologize. This is um, a retelling of Pride and Prejudice. Name-wise, they use the same names. Situation-wise, obviously, it doesn't quite go like that. It is set in... It's like set in Cincinnati and Darcy's a doctor. Oh no, he's a neurosurgeon. Let's go there. And and Lizzie is a writer. And I mean, it's very interesting how they, where they put everyone. 
uh, <laughs> and how it all ended up happening. And the two younger girls were like CrossFit paleo people, which is what I am, so it was funny. But it it will com it will burst your bubble. So the next door neighbors decided that they were gonna do some construction, so I apologize if there is noise and the dog is barking and I I'm sorry. <laughs> This is sometimes just what happens. See, I was telling you about real life. Here it is, total of real life. Um, so if you hold Pride and Prejudice up to like some certain beautiful ideal and all of that, this may shock and horrify you a little bit like it did for me because it really does take their personalities and augment to me, some of the bad that's in their personalities and put it in this book. So it did burst a little bit of like a perfection bubble for me, I will admit. Uh, that being said, I ended up giving it four stars because I really, really did like it. It is a very quick read or listen, even listen. The chapters are super duper short. Like, you know, this is it for this chapter. And it, I think it was just like a very interesting retelling. I also got to one of my more anticipated releases from this year, which is Suitors and Sabotage by Cindy Anstey. These books always give me like nostalgia because of like the Zebra Regency romances that I used to read as a teenager. Uh, so these are just adorable books. I will say this one I did not like as much as the other two by her that I read, but it was still an enjoyable read. This follows Imogen. She is an artist, a very excellent one. She is super duper shy until you get to know her. Um, and she had a London season and for some reason this guy just like fell in love with this vision of her. But he is also kind of shy and doesn't know how to win her. So he brings his brother, cause this is like set with house parties, like how they, in the summertime, people love some sort of you know, level of society would like go from house to house and kind of enjoy themselves. And so this, he would bring his brother with him to try to figure it out. Now his brother is going to be an architect. So there's not huge amounts of money here. He's a second son anyway, and he wants to be an architect, but he can't draw. So he asks her, Imogen, to help him draw. And they have a lot in common and you know, things happen. And yet this is not the one that's supposed to, that she's supposed to fall in love with. Uh, and his brother, it's like, a, oh, it's my brother's girl. And I kind of like her, and yet he's in lust with her and stuff. Um, I did find that it had like a more realistic ending to it um, with regard to like the relationship between the brothers of what could potentially happen. Um, so that was good. Again, cute enjoyable like if Regency romances are your are your jam like look her up she writes funny situations and very interesting situations um there is a little mystery of who's trying to kill someone in this too but you know it's a very light mystery <laughs> and I end up giving it th three stars upon reflection it could be more like three and a half but again Goodreads doesn't do half stars so you gotta make a choice I read some new releases in July for some reason. Um, I finally got to A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J. Maas. This is novella, long novella, in the Court of Thorns and Roses series. It's a bridge between the initial trilogy and then where things are going from here. This book is not getting a lot of love, um, except for from super fans. And even then, some of them are saying that it's wasn't worth anything, you know, it was just like, there's there's lots of differing opinions on this. I enjoyed this. There is no plot. I will completely say that. It is really just setting things up. Finishing what should have been finished and setting up for what's coming. Do I think it was necessary? I kind of do. Um, because this is a lot of, I mean, there really is a lot of novella going on here. <laughs> um, and to try to put that into a foreword or, or a, a prologue or more chapters in the previous books would have maybe not made complete sense. 
but I can see people's points because again, there is no specific plot. We kind of left the kingdoms the way they were and you know, there's more people in their love stories. These are, you know, also very much love stories to follow next. We did add a point of view. I don't remember having Cassian. Maybe he was in the third book though, now that I think about it. But we get Cassian's point of view um, and we get a little bit into where her sisters are after all of this and in the year following all the things that have happened. Um, so I gave it four stars. I really liked it. I mean, would I have rather had the next book in the series? Probably yes. Uh, then I listened to, um, on audiobook, because I did a lot of that, uh, Sky in the Deep by Adrian Young. Um, I don't remember who narrated it. I wasn't a huge fan of the narrator. She was a little bit frantic in her narration, which I didn't enjoy. So they say on the flap that this is part Wonder Woman, part Vikings. I understand the Viking reference. I don't understand the Wonder Woman reference because this is set in like a fantasy world of Viking peoples where there's clans and they're always fighting each other. Women are allowed into the military, although if you've done any research recently on Vikings, vi female Vikings were actually in the military. Um, just saying, like, as an aside. <laughs> And people were talking about how there's, you know, kick butt girls and all of that. Yeah, I didn't see that. Just because a girl fights in the army doesn't mean that she's awesome in any way. Whatever, you know, you are what you are and you're kick butt, whether you're in the military, whether you're not in the military, where you push out babies. Like, seriously, if you haven't pushed out, pushed out a baby or given birth, like, seriously, there's nothing more kick butt than giving birth. <laughs> so, like... I'm sorry. Anyway, tangent. I didn't find her kick butt, if that's what you're talking about, just because she chopped people's arms off. I don't see what that has to do with anything. Um, she's actually pretty brutal. This book was very graphic. I would not give this to my teenager, to be perfectly honest. I mean, spoiler here. She graphically pokes someone's eyeball out of the socket during this book. I nearly vomited and I'm a nurse. So this was very graphic in its violence. The story, I was like, meh. And so I'm kind of disappointed in this book, to be honest. I was, the good thing, uh, romance was secondary. It's, I do read a lot of romance, but I do find that it's fun to not just have romance. Um, and I do like that she, all right, this review is really crazy and I'm sorry, but I've got lots of thoughts that are like all coming to me and I don't really know how to organize them completely. So the graphic violence, no, this is not YA as far as I'm concerned. Um, two, I did like the romance was secondary because there was a lot going on in this book and she didn't need to have a romance. Three, all I could think of during it was because they're so young and they're essentially brainwashed. I mean, they're not going to say that in this book, but they're like child soldiers just going out and killing this other tribe because they were told to. And it was like kind of gross in that way. Um, unfortunately, this happens in real life. But, you know, these are 15, 14. They're trained to be in the military. And all I could think of were like the pictures of child soldiers with, with guns. And I don't know why, but it just the way it was. Um... She ends up getting captured, going into enemy camp, acting like a complete jerk. This is getting captured. Don't act like her. This is not the way to do it. Gets her mind blown and gets herself a little bit unbrainwashed, not by choice, but because she didn't really have a she didn't have a choice in the matter. Um, so change and seeing different sides of matters and having a little bit of an open mind, and for that. It was good because it did show that in quite a graphic way. Um, overall, it was okay. Like the goods and the bads kind of weighed themselves out and I ended up giving it three stars, but I would not give this to your young teenager. And that is it. This is extremely long. I apologize. My thoughts were a bit all over the place. I apologize for that too. If you'd like to 
ask me a question or ask me to clarify anything, I will try to do that in the comments. If you've read the books, agree with me, disagree with me, as long as everyone is a decent human being and polite, I do not mind that. So I will get back to you at another time with another video. I apologize for the uh, sporadicness of my videos, but it is what it is. I do this for fun and if I'm not feeling it, I don't do anything. So here we are. Uh, <laughs> But I do try to tell you everything that I read over the course of the year. So I get to it eventually, even if it's late. So I will talk to you later. I um, am enjoying watching everyone else's videos because they seem, you guys all seem to be incredibly more successful than me. And so I will continue to watch. And I love you all. I hope you're reading something wonderful. And I will see you again. Bye.